Hi guys, welcome back to the Frugal Homestead. I'm Missy, and guess what we're making today? We are making unsweetened applesauce, and I'm going to give this applesauce to my granddaughter that will be born at the end of the month. I don't want her having too much sugar, so I'm not going to put any sugar in it. Uh, I just wanted to make sure everyone knows that with apples, you don't actually have to put any preservatives in them of any sort. You don't have to put salt or sugar or anything in them because apples actually contain enough sugar naturally that you can can them safely without adding any sugar. I also want to say a special thanks to my father-in-law, John, because he lives just across the holler on his farm, and he has tons of fruit trees, and we always have an unlimited supply of apples so that I can can applesauce, apple pie fillings, um, apple butter, you name it, whatever you can make with applesauce or apples, we can have um, because he gives us tons of them every year. So... Let's get started. First off, I've already decored my apples, peeled them, and I have them actually soaking in some lemon juice so that they don't turn brown. I do this whenever I make an applesauce because I want it to have that lighter color. Whenever I'm doing apple butter though, I generally don't even put lemon juice on them because it's going to get dark anyway, so there's really no reason to put it on there other than for the view of the applesauce afterwards. So we're going to strain these. I'll move this out of the way. Now these are going to cut, cook down quite significantly. I have approximately nine cups now. I'm making four pints of applesauce to give to her. And anything extra we'll just use for after dinner tonight. I also need to point out that if you are actually cooking your apples and you're putting them through a sieve or a food mill, you don't even actually have to core or peel your apples. You can just simply cook them when they soften, then you send it through your sieve or your food mill. I like to peel mine and core them before I do it. It's just the way I've always done it, but you can do it however it makes you happy and, or however your recipe calls for. Alright, so I am going to cook my apples in my pressure cooker canner. I am going to do it on custom. Change the time to 20 minutes. And just hit start. I'll be back whenever these are done. Alright, so it's been 20 minutes and I let it cool. The apples are done. And we're going to start getting this process through the sieve. Whenever I get it all done, we'll be back and I will show you the canning portion. Okay, so we put the apples through the sieve. I poured it into a pitcher just because it's a little bit easier to work with whenever you're filling your jars. I sanitized all my jars in boiling water and I put my lids in there too. You don't necessarily have to do the lids anymore, but I always do just because it's of what I've always done. Let's get these filled up. Now you'll notice this applesauce is a little bit thinner, but the reason it is a little bit thinner is because it's for my grandbaby. And with a newborn, it's a little bit easier to have it a little bit 
thinner when you're feeding it to them. Remember when you put your lids on? Don't put the lids too tight. Remember with applesauce you don't need an extremely lot of head space, but you do need a little bit. Looks like I fell just a little bit short of my four pints. But that's okay. Now I'm just going to put them in my pressure cooker canner. Try not put your jars touching each other. I am going to set this for custom 10 minutes. And I'll be back whenever it depressurizes. We're going to let it depressurize on its own. I'm not going to let any of the steam off. All right, guys, it's done. It cooked for 10 minutes. We let it sit until it depressurized on its own. Let's see what we got. I need to tell you that you do not need a pressure can applesauce. You can do it in just a water bath. But when I'm doing small batches, this works wonderful. Now these have actually already sealed, but if you were water bathing them, they should pop within a half an hour of you taking them out. Thanks for joining us here at the Frugal Homestead, and we hope you join us in the next one.